You're a persecutor. You are nothing. But you know, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Every time you persecute me and you come up against me, you don't come up against me, but him who sent me. I'm not sent of myself. I have the word of God in me, and I know the word. I discern it, and I know the truth. You don't, what, it's arrogant to say that I, I have the word of God? That's, that's humbling to me. Because I know I need the word of God. Why should I listen to it? You're against what I'm doing here. Jesus sent me here, and you're the devil sent you here to try to stop the preaching. But you know what? The word of God goes on forever. The word of God goes on forever. The Bible says, preach the word. Be instant, in season, and out of season. But you got to preach it the right way. Hey, man, well, who are you to tell me how to preach? Who are you to tell me how to preach? Look, the Bible says this. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 1, every single one, every single one. Every single one. What they do from there, what they do from there is up to them. I bring every one of them to the Word of God because the Word of God never returns void. Moses, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in it he, he meditates day and night. Hey, I'm trying to preach about love. You're interrupting me. But the Bible says this. The wicked, the ungodly are not so, but they're like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the seat of the scornful. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly will perish. Your worldly Christianity will perish. Oh, I wish you were hot or cold because you're lukewarm. I'm going to vomit you out. Oh, preaching the word now is wrong. You're against Jesus. Jesus said these words, not me. Not me. I'm preaching to what Jesus said. He said, therefore, be zealous and repent, is what Jesus said. Repent of your masturbation. Repent of your drunkenness. Repent of your worldly music. Repent of your worldly entertainment. Repent and do the first works. Oh, Jesus said this. Let me tell you about the love of God. Let me tell you about the love of God in Jesus Christ. Jesus said, Behold, says he who has the seven spirits of God who walks in the midst of seven golden lampstands. I know your works. I know that you are alive, that you have a name, but you are dead, Jesus said. Jesus said. Those who have ears, let them hear. Be quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to get angry, for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Jesus said, I know your works. I know because, oh, that's exactly right. You just gave, thank you, Lord. Spitting out the word. Hey, man, don't be double-minded. Don't be double-minded. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You're double-minded. You know what God is? God is love. You're double-minded. Choose who you will serve. By telling us how we are wrong. I'm the Bible says it. The Bible. Okay, but you can spread it in a positive manner. I'm, I'm You're preaching. I'm heralding. Why we are wrong. You can tell us how we can be better. So you can get saved. So you can get saved. Yeah. Okay, but you're not. Hey, doing hey, that way. hey! The Bible says this. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Open rebuke is better than love, carefully concealed. So uh, Proverbs 27. Proverbs chapter 27, verses 5 and 6. The Bible says in Proverbs, hold on, Proverbs chapter, yes he did, lift up his voice in a mountain. And Jesus said this, Jesus said this, Jesus said this. He said, whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. Whatever you hear in the ear, proclaim it from the housetops. He said in secret. Listen though, you said you that you have a clean, you said you have a clean no conscience. Life without sin. It's willful you're, of sin. You're sitting willful. just along your you're willful. Your will, it's a willful sin though. You're, you're you actively. No, no. I, I reject those things. I keep myself from my iniquity. I kept myself from my sins, my secrets. Well, well, if you said that you have a clean conscience, why did you say earlier that I'm going to hell with you? I know I'm going to hell. Well, then you don't have a clean conscience. You don't have a clean conscience. I'm going to hell for so many reasons, but I 100% guarantee you. This woman needs to be saved from hell. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand. Jesus Christ, folks. That's the question today. What are where are you at with Jesus? What are you doing with Jesus? Do you understand who Jesus is, what Jesus did on the cross? You know, he was born of a virgin. Immaculate conception. Oh no, you're the lie. Your life's a vapor. You know, the Bible says, who was a liar? But he who denies that Jesus is the Christ. So uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 22. The liars are the ones who deny that Jesus is the Christ because you're not the Christ. I'm not the Christ. I don't deserve 
all praise, honor, and glory. But Jesus, because he is the Christ, deserves all praise, honor, and glory. The Bible says that he is worthy to receive all riches, honor, power, majesty, and might are all to him. So Jesus was born of a virgin 2,000 years ago, Immaculate Conception. The Holy Spirit came in to Mary's womb and impregnated her with the seed of the Father. And then Jesus came forth to fulfill the prophecy. It says she will, he will be born of a virgin. His name will be called Emmanuel, God with us. So Jesus came to fulfill the plan of God becoming a human being. Jesus Christ. Divinity in flesh, God with us. So Jesus fulfilled the law after he was born. He lived a sinless life, a perfect life. He, uh, you know, he only did what he saw the Father do. He only told, he only said what he heard the Father say. He came with the purpose to die for the sins of the world. And Jesus fulfilled his purpose. Jesus fulfilled every plan of God. When he went and fulfilled and, and became a ransom, the Bible says, to be testified in due season. Oh, God had a plan from the beginning, even from the fall of Adam and Eve. You know, the Bible says where sin entered in, it said there, there the, uh, the offense uh, abounded. But where sin abounded, there grace abounded that much more. See, God had to pour out his grace. God had to give the, the child the baby in a manger became a man. The Bible says he grew in knowledge and stature, in favor with God and man. Now they marveled at the wisdom of Jesus Christ because he wasn't just a man. He was God in the flesh. He knew what it would take to save mankind. Jesus said, I did not come to serve but to but to be, but I did not come to be served but to serve and to give my life a ransom for many. You know, but people. People now, they, they reject this, this, this plan. They reject the ransom. They reject the atonement. And by doing so, they continue on in their sinful ways. They continue on in their destructive ways. The Bible says many will follow their destructive ways by whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. We're in a time and a generation where the truth, the Bible, is being blasphemed. It's being, uh, it's being, uh, it's being taken out of. The, uh, you know, our communities, our colleges, our nation, they don't even say in God we trust anymore. You know, they used to have the Ten Commandments hanging up in the courtrooms, but now the devil. The devil gets in, he starts taking out the biblical principles, and what do you have? Homosexual marriage. What do you have? Pornography. What do you have? Abortion. And you got all these wicked things in your life right now, testifying against you that you're headed to hell. I know, but some will awake. Some will arise in these dark hours. Some will wake out of their wicked ways, and they'll come to the light as he is in the light. The Bible says, do not be deceived. It says, God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. He who says he knows God and walks in darkness is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Folks, examine your life. Check your life. Do you walk in darkness? Do you think that you're one with God? You're okay with Jesus? Even though you're masturbating, fornicating, using marijuana, doing all these wicked things, uh, filling your body full of, you know, uh, alcoholism and filling your body full of all the things, the demonic things on your television, your internet. Oh, you must repent. You must turn. You must uh, open your Bibles and be a student of the Word. The Bible says, it says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You know, the, uh, knowing the word of God is more important than you knowing, uh, you know, your history class or your math class. You might not think so right now, but Jesus himself said, seek first the kingdom and my righteousness and all other things will be added to you. You see, God's first. You have to seek God first. He's above all. He's through all. He's in all. He gives life to all flesh. Isn't he worthy of your first fruits of your life? He's worthy of my first fruits. I know that God, he, he gave it to me. Jesus said, I am the beginning and the ending, the alpha and the omega. Therefore, he deserves the best of our life. He deserves the, 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 the excellence of our life, our attention. Oh, the Bible says, give attention to no wisdom. Oh, because wisdom is better than weapons of war. Did you know that? Did you know that wisdom is better than guns? It's better than bombs. 
It's better than nukes. It's better than weapons of war. I tell you what, it's the knowledge of God. The fear of God is the beginning of knowledge and wisdom. Oh, but fools despise instruction. Fools, foolish people, people who love their sin, people who continue on in their evil ways, thinking what, that God's not going to judge? God's not going to arise against the house of evildoers? That's what the Bible says. The Bible says God, He also is wise, and He will send out His words and not call them back on that day. Are you in the book of life? Are you in the book of life? Because if you're not, you'll be cast into the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. It's the second death. You see, there's a first death, there's a second death coming. It's the lake of fire. It's for wicked people, people who think they're good. They think they're okay. They think, oh, I do good, but they're not born again. You must be born again. How you doing? Uh -huh. You're wrong about that. Look at all the Bible scriptures. How can you be a Christian? You're coming up against the word, not me. Yeah, you are. I'm not here. I'm not, I'm not here. I, I'm not going to have a conversation because I got to preach to these people. But because, oh, okay. yeah, maybe later. But I got to preach right now. Folks, don't follow this false Christianity. That it's wrong. The Bible says, does not wisdom cry aloud? In the open square, she raises her voice. Oh, because no one's telling you the truth. The devil's blinding your eyes. You know, the devil wants you to continue uh, guzzling beers at your bong parties and your keg parties and doing all your evil deeds, thinking that what, that God is going to allow you into his kingdom living this way? Don't you understand what it means to be changed? See, I'm changed. I, I appreciate the fact that God came into my life. See, I have a testimony of God's love, God's truth. The Bible also says, it says, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord we persuade men. I persuade you by the terror of God, the goodness of God. Because I know, I know you need someone to shake you up, someone to get you thinking about the lies of your, your life, your conscience, you know, sparking inside of you. Folks need to understand you have a record. God's given you a record, the Holy Spirit, searching your heart. But what do you do? Your heart's corrupt. What do you do? Your heart is hardened. So people, they lie. They, they buy a lie that they can look at pornography and not go to hell. That's a lie of the devil. That you can live for all the things in this world and still make it somehow to heaven. It's a lie from the devil. Oh, the Bible says in the last days, men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good despisers of good. The Bible says, by whom they says that the way of the truth is blaspheme. People blaspheme the Bible. Oh, what a bunch of garbage. Oh, holiness. No one can be holy. No one's perfect. All oh, sinners. It's not true. That's not true. Maybe you're a sinner. Maybe you can't be holy right now just yet. Maybe your parents are a wrong example for you. But you know what? There are people out there who are truly converted. You know, the Bible says, repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. You know, when you're converted, you're not going to continue on in your old ways. You're not going to continue on uh, in your lying ways, your stealing ways, your, uh, your covetous ways. If any man is in Christ, they're a new creation. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. When somebody gets saved, when somebody is, uh, uh, is, is, is headed for heaven and they escape hell, they have a new creation, a new heart, a new spirit. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says, cast away from you all your transgressions which you have committed and get for yourself a new heart and a new spirit. Why should you die, saith God? You know, the only, the only uh, lesbians and homosexuals that are going to be in, in heaven are going to be ex homosexuals and ex-lesbians because they got for themselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why should you die, says God. Why? Why? God takes no pleasure in the death of him who dies, but that you would turn and live. You can do it. You, can, you, you know, you know your, your, your wicked friends on this campus, they tell you, oh, you know, we all are sinners. We all live this way. Everybody is given over to these evil things. Don't believe them. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Yeah, man, you don't understand. God gives strength to the weak, it says. To those who have no might, he increases power. You see, in my darkest hour, my weakest moment, I don't trust in my own strength. I don't trust in my own intellect. 
I trust in the Word of God. Oh, the Bible says, How can a young man cleanse his way by taking heed according to thy word? David said, Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you, O Lord. That's why you can't trust. The Bible says a fool trusts in his own heart. Our heart is desperately wicked, deceitful. Above all things, who can know our heart? God. God's greater than our heart. He knows all things. The wicked. Everybody's heart. There's none who does good. No, not one. You're not good. You're not good. Well, 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 the born again Christian has a new heart. That's what I'm trying to point people to. Yes. But, but, but the mystery is this. Christ in you, the hope of glory. You see, a Christian does have a new heart. He's right. But it's not, it's not my heart now. It's Jesus' heart. It's Jesus Christ. Paul said this. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who died for me. But what does that mean? Do you continue on in your sin thinking that now somehow that there's uh, Jesus in you dwelling in your temple and you're continuing to masturbate? continuing to look at pornography, continuing to smoke marijuana, continuing to do these evil things? Huh? Not according to Romans 6. Not according to Romans 6. No, the Bible, that's right. Shall we sin that grace may abound? God forbid. There's a lot of people on this campus continuing to sin, thinking that grace is going to abound. God forbids it. The Bible says that later on in Romans chapter 6, it says, but God be thanked that you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. I was delivered from my evil ways because there's a form of doctrine. There's a, there's a way that God uses to speak to our hearts. It's called grace and truth. It's called righteousness and peace. It's called goodness and severity. It's not just, it's not just one or the other. They come together in Jesus. Was, was Jesus' message one-sided? Has anybody ever read the Bible and seen how Jesus preached? Yes, he forgave. Yes, he had great love. Yes, he was amazingly, abundantly, uh, uh, a bountiful in his, in his grace. But he won the people. Oh, he won the people continually. Grace? Uh, well, well, grace is, has to do with forgiveness, has to do with uh, favor from God. Grace is, is what God gives, empowers us. Grace empowers us to do what we cannot do in ourselves. And it all comes through Jesus. Grace, the Bible says this. But, well, yeah, kind of. But I try to define things biblically by Scripture. The Bible says this. The Bible says that the law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. How do you know what grace is? You look what Jesus said about grace. You know, you know Jesus Christ, he, his parables were full of grace. They are full of warnings, too. The Bible says this about grace. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. You know, grace, grace is something that teaches you something, that you should turn away from, from uh, drugs, turn away from alcoholism, turn away from partying that goes on on these campuses. Go ahead. The, the, the Bible says, he who, he who still does wickedly, it says, it says God will wound the head of his enemies, the hairy scalp of him who continues on in his trespasses. That's hell. Look at the message, man. Hell. Hell for those people who do these things. I came here today because I want you to receive mercy like I did. I used to be a lot like you. I used to be up on this sign. You know, hell is a terrible place where there's weeping and wailing. You know, yeah, man. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says this about hell. The Bible says that hell is like a place where you're, you have a, a, a blanket that's too short, doesn't cover you. And you're on a bed that's too small and you can't get comfortable. Oh, it's terrible, man. You're uncomfortable. The Bible says it's the fire that's never quenched. It's the worm that never dies. In hell, there's no end to hell. There's no end to the torment in hell. You know, the Bible says, uh, you, know, you know, sin is pleasurable for a season, but afterwards it, it brings death. Afterwards, it brings destruction. You know, you know I, used to look, I used to go after the, porn, uh, the, the, the prostitutes on the porn sites. I know it brings great pleasure at first. But afterwards, it says she is sharper than a two-edged sword. It says she's more bitter than wormwood. 
Don't you understand? Hey, let's not joke around about your soul, okay? Your soul is precious. Your soul is precious. You're made in God's image. We're the only creation of God that's set apart to rule and reign. We're created. You know the Bible says? The Bible says this. If you do good, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do good, sin lies at the door. Young man, sin is lying at your door. And what does the Bible say you should do? Rule, rule over it. Rule over it. You got to get it out of your life. So if you don't do that, yes, you will end up in hell. Doesn't matter how many pr uh, sinners' prayers, how many Hail Marys, even though Hail Marys is not biblical anyways. Um, the thing is, I've looked at First John 3, 9. Yeah. And one of the things that, that's been going on is that it says that he who commits sin is of the devil. But that yes. word commits would say, would say uh, poieto, which means a one-time act. But the, the thing that I, that I see that with is that many people, many biblical characters, like, for example, uh, David or Paul, okay. ha have sinned before, even though they were actual Christians. Sure, sure, sure. You know, you know, you know all have sinned. Everybody sinned and fallen short of God's glory. But... But, you know, every person in the Bible that found mercy from God turned away from their sin. And they, the Bible says in Romans chapter 13, make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Yes, David sinned. Uh, just so you know, I, I got to keep preaching because I'm by myself. But young man, you know, you know, don't make an excuse for your sin. That's an evil heart. The Bible says, do not have in you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. You know, you can depart from God. You know, but when you're in Christ, the Bible says he'll never leave you or forsake you. What a promise that God will be with you to the end of the age. You know, when you're dying, what, can you, are you strong enough to deliver yourself from the pains of death, from the sorrows of the grave? No, we need a deliverer. Came out of Zion, Mount Zion, the city on the high hill of God. You see, God dwells on high. With heels of a contrite spirit, a lowly spirit. But with you proud, the proud, they're risen up against God. Why do the wicked renounce God? He says in his heart, God will not require an account. But you'll give an account. I'll give an account. My sins are covered, though. My sins are under the blood. Where are your sins at? Are you walking in your sins? Homosexuals, are you walking in your sins? You're going to give an account. Oh, you're going to be shut out forever and ever in blackness of darkness. Now I came here today because I want you to be saved and I have hope for this nation, but it's not according to what this garbage, the political agendas, all the Bible says, the things that men esteem are an abomination to God. God laughs at them. He sees their day is coming. America's day is going to come if they continue on these wicked paths. Wicked. Go ahead. No sex before marriage. None. None. No test driving these women. You know, you know, you know, you know, let me tell you this. You know, you these women are most likely someone else's future wife. And you're defiling them and they're bringing that baggage into their marriage bed with them when you do that. The Bible says that, that, that marriage is honorable and the bed is undefiled. But God will judge fornicators and adulterers. She's wicked too. She's wicked too, and she needs to repent. An adulterous woman is like a deep pit, the Bible says. A seductress is a narrow well. She, it says, she lies in wait for a victim, and she increases the unfaithful among men. Don't follow these seductress women. Are you crazy? I'm crazy for Jesus, man. I live for Christ. I lost my mind. I have a new heart, new mind, new paths, passion for Christ. I care for lost souls. I don't want these souls to burn in hell. I know that God is reaching out to you just like he reached out to me. I know you're like a sheep without a shepherd. You don't know. You don't know when the bombs are going to come. You don't know when the earthquakes are going to hit, when God's judgments come. Suddenly, the Bible says, God's not going to give all these warnings forever. huh? Like a thief in the night, the Bible says. When they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape, the Bible says. 
You can't trust. Don't trust it. Don't trust in that. You know, you know, don't trust in America's weapons. Don't trust in the stock market. You need to trust in the spirit of God, the spirit of God that raises men from the dead. God, it says he calls those things that are not as though they were. When God said, let there be light, light appeared. When God said, uh, you know, you know, let the earth, let the dry land appear. It appeared because God's word has power to give life and he can take life. God's going to take your life if you continue in your sin. He's going to destroy your life. I don't want it. I want to be blessed. You got to get blessed. Like me, I'm blessed. The curse is your, is your pornography. The curse is your sex out of marriage. That's a curse on your life. You need to be released from your bonds. You're in bondage to your, to your cigarettes. You're in bondage to your, to your uh, cocaine. You, some of you are getting some harder drugs. I know I was in college, started using cocaine, started experimenting with some, some bad stuff. The Bible says this, do you not know that a man is a slave to that to which he obeys, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? Who are you serving today? You can't serve God in money. You can't serve God in your flesh. You have to believe the, the gospel. What is belief? What is uh, faith? What does the Bible describe as saving grace? You know, you know the Bible talks about genuine faith and uh, false faith. There's a lot of people who have false faith 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 without works is dead the bible says yes uh, what is the bible the bible is the living word of god second timothy 3 16 says all scripture is given by inspiration of god that word inspiration is the word theoneo in the greek it means god breathed god gave all scripture by inspiration from himself it says it's profitable for doctrine for instruction for reproof for correction that the man of God may be perfect and entire, lacking no good thing. I came here today because you need to understand that when you lack, when you lack the power of God in your life, when you lack being a Christian, when you lack being separate from this world, you see, I'm separate from this world now. When I got saved, I threw my cable television out. I threw my worldly music out. The Bible says, huh? What kind of music you listen to now? Only Christian music, Matt. I only read the Bible too, man. The Bible. The Word of God never returns void. Did you know that? The Word of God will always bless you, but it'll, 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 it'll convict you. What's your favorite verse? My favorite verse out of the Bible? Oh, man, that's a hard one there. There's so many. <laughs> My favorite verse is like, <laughs> you, see, you see, the Bible says, the Bible says that uh, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, young man. What's in my heart is the Word of God. It's truth. Uh, it's, 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 it's enlightenment. But when you speak evil, you blaspheme in matters you don't understand. You don't swear. I, mean, like, I used to. I used to have a filthy mouth. What do you say? Huh? You stub your toe, like what do you say? I. Oh, Drat. Yeah. You don't use foul language. Look, the Bible says you'll be judged for every idle word that you speak, okay? You know, you know, you know, you know, people who say they're Christians and use foul language, they're missing the beginning steps of Christianity. Because the Bible says in James chapter 1, it says, if any man considers himself to be religious and does not bridle his tongue, his religion is useless. You know, you know that's the first step is learning how to, you, you don't have to say the F word and all these wicked things. You don't have to tell dirty jokes. The Bible says, laying aside all filthiness, overflow of wickedness, receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your soul. The, you need salvation for your soul. The, the body dies, you understand? Our body gets old. You know, you're not always going to be young. You're not always going to be, you know, strong. The Bible says that even the youths shall faint and the young men shall utterly perish. But those who wait on the Lord, they shall mount up on wings with eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. You see, I understand that their strength is divine strength. It raised Jesus from the dead. You know what it was? It was righteousness. You need righteousness. You don't need a blunt. You don't need a keg party, a keg stand and a beer cup. The burning bush, yes, that was uh, when God appeared to Moses in a burning bush, and he spoke to Moses, and the bush was not consumed. What did he tell Moses? Go to my people, right? Go deliver my people. See, some of you have an understanding that these times are rough, that you need something that, that's eternal. You see, the Bible says the flesh profits nothing. Okay, well, what do you believe in about God? Oh, let me give you this. What do you, 
Well, I, got, I talk to people before I shake their hands. Okay. Are you, are you, are you going to read the Bible? I'm not Christian, but I do respect okay. you for being well, out there well, and a lot of the values that you preach that I do. Okay, but will you, will you seek the Word of God? Will you pray about what I'm saying and really get into the Bible? Okay. That's, that's a humble heart. Really do it. I, I mean that. God bless you. But you got to repent, though. Right now, you're not right with God, and you'll end up in hell if you continue down this path. I tell you the truth because I love you. you got to turn. Look, folks. The Bible says, faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. The kisses of it. Some of your, some of you, your parents are your worst enemy. Because what do they do? They kiss you on the cheek. They tell you it's okay. They tell you it's okay to be gay. And they're kissing you on the cheek. They're your enemies. You know, people are continuing to follow these lies. To, to, to not to follow the truth. You know what Jesus said? Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you'll be my disciple indeed. You'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. How did I get free? I stayed in the word of God. I stayed planted in the script. The Bible says don't... Well, well, it's not good enough just to read the Bible. The Bible says uh, be a doer of the word, not a hearer only, deceiving yourself. Huh? You have to, you got to live it. You do. And the Bible says this. The Bible says all flesh is as grass. And the, and the glory of man is as the flower that appears on the grass. The grass withers. The flower fades away like our bodies. But the word of God endures forever. You see, when the word gets inside of you, and you're one with the word, and you, you believe the word, you live forever. You do that theme which, which endures. See, there's that which endures and that which is temporary. The Bible says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. While we do not look to the things that are seen, but the things that are not seen. Because the things that are seen are temporary, but the things that are not seen, they are eternal. Folks, it's not seen. You, you might think that you, you're not going to be judged, but you will be judged. Everybody's judged by the Word of God. What are you doing about Judgment Day? Are you not a Christian? You're not in Christ? You haven't repented? You'll end up destroyed on Judgment Day. You know, the Bible says when, when you die. Oh, when I die. Well, well, absent from the body is present with the Lord. So, so if you continue, uh, you know, down your crooked ways, your wicked ways, and you die in that sin, uh -huh. you, 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 that's it. You'll be in God's presence, and you'll be why cast out. Why can't I smoke weed if it's natural? Uh, marijuana, marijuana causes cancer. No, it doesn't. Marijuana causes cancer. Lung cancer. Marijuana will lead you to pornography. That could be true. Well, Marijuana will lead you to cocaine. Marijuana will lead you to get high, high, high. What about marijuana brownies? Uh, yeah, that'll mess you up too. i give you an upset stomach, probably make you puke. Marijuana will aid you in alcohol abuse. Alcohol abuse on this campus. Isn't there a few drunkards on this campus? I'm sure there's a couple. I'm sure there's a couple. You're worthy of the gospel, but you got to, you have to, look, Jesus came to call sinners to repentance. What's your view on strippers? Of the devil. Strippers are of the devil. Uh, look, look, folks. Do you understand, you know, what, 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 who, who's Jesus? Would Jesus Would Jesus be at the strip club go, uh, lusting after women? Would Jesus be doing that? No. He'd be crying. He'd be weeping and calling to those, those, those women, these women and the men, and saying, look, I'm going to die for you and give my life for you. The Bible says that we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but him who died for them and rose from the grave. You look, look, look. You're not powerful enough to be raised from the grave. You're not. I'm not. But Jesus, he could do it because he was God. You know Jesus was God. He wasn't just another man. Because uh, I was stricken by God, okay? I had heart failure. Uh, I was judged by the Lord. I used to smoke marijuana. I have four felonies for selling marijuana on my record uh, about 13 years ago. I tell you, man, the, 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 the cops don't bear the gun in vain. I remember when they had that gun in my face, ready to take me in for the, for the felonies for selling drugs. But you know what? You know what? There's a greater authority. God, all authority. There's no authority except that which just comes from God. The Bible is the ultimate authority. 
and it tells who's going to be judged in that courtroom and found guilty. Do you understand that, that there's no probation, there's no parole in hell? There's no, there's no, uh, you know, you know, rehabilitation plans in the grave. When you go there, you get stuck. You get fastened. The Bible says this. The Bible says that no one has power over the spirit to retain the spirit. It says there is no release from that war. And wickedness will not deliver those who are given over to it. You see, if God delivers you to the torturers, Jesus warned about that, you know. Jesus said, he said, make peace with your adversary while you are along the way with him. Lest your adversary deliver you to the judge, the judge turn you over to the officer, and the officer throw you into prison, and you never get out. That's what Jesus taught about hell. People, they get turned over to the angels. The angels, it says they come, they reap the earth. They separate the wicked from among the just, and they cast the wicked out into a furnace of affliction. The wicked. Are you the wicked? What makes you the wicked? Your sins. You're sinning. What's, a, what's, what's unborn, unborn again? again? Huh? What's unborn again? That's anybody who's not been uh, uh, truly converted, truly repented. The Bible says this in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Nobody. Without the Holy Spirit in your life changing you, humbling you, putting a cry in your belly. See, I got a cry in my spirit. It comes out and says, Abba, Father, you know, it cries to you, be reconciled to God. You see, that's when you're born again. You have the Spirit of Christ. You have, you have that, which is, that which is from it, the, the, uh, the, the heavenly realm. It's what's eternal. It's, it's what Jesus accomplished through his power and his love. An so I have a testimony of, of a clear conscience now. <laughs> my wife doesn't have to worry about my internet history. My wife doesn't have to worry about if I'm lying to her or cheating on her. Because the Spirit bears witness that we are the sons of God. What is the Spirit bearing witness for you, though? That you're still masturbating. You're still getting drunk. You're still smoking marijuana. You're still hanging out at these sex parties at these colleges. The fraternities and the sororities. Yeah, man. It's consuming your life. It's eating you up inside. You don't have to. You don't have to have sex ever again, man. All you need is, this, is love. All you need is God's love to fulfill your life. Love is not sex. Like Bob, Bob Marley was of the devil. Oh my God. And Bob Marley, I believe he got cancer because of his blunt smoking. Probably. Probably right. right, right? He smoked a lot of weed, though. He died like 36 years old from cancer. Put the two and two together. Smoking too much ganj will give you cancer. Look, I used to have a lot of health problems before I became a Christian. And I became a Christian, <laughs> I don't ever get sick. You see, the Bible says, God is he who forgives your iniquities. He heals all your diseases. He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. I, you, know, yo, you know, when I became a Christian, God provided for my business. God provided for my household. He restored my marriage. I had heart failure seven years ago. I couldn't even swallow my own saliva. I was so sick because of my sin. Because I was in the bar laughing at a guy, and I choked. I choked in pride. <laughs> Not able to breathe. Almost died when it happened. But then my, my, my throat was so bad, I couldn't, eat, I couldn't eat. I lost 40 pounds, suffering on my deathbed at age 30 years old. But God taught me something in that hour. That he taught me something. The Bible says in Luke chapter 20, verse 38, that God is not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living. For all live to him. All live to God. Or you die to God. God will God, God throw your soul into hell. Watch you burn forever. And he'll say, so what? You're in hell. I gave you a chance. And what did you do? You spit on me. You, you, you gave me nothing in return for my love for you. But to those who, are, who, who come to Jesus, who have faith in Christ, they will repent. And they seek the living God with the whole heart. What does he do? Well, my son, my daughter. Come into the kingdom prepared for you before the foundation of the world. That's what Jesus said. Don't you want to enter in and hear? Well, well done, thy good and faithful servant, or are you going to be cast out? You're going to be cast out in your religious hypocrisy. Cast out. Does that say? Gay is not going to heaven. Gay is not. I believe the Bible over this sign. God's giving you a sign. Gays. Gays do not get into heaven. They go to a deep place in hell. 
The Bible says about gays in Genesis chapter 13, verse 13, it says, Those men of Sodom were wicked sinners, exceedingly sinful, it says. They wanted to rape the, the homosexual men in Sodom and Gomorrah. They wanted to rape the angels that showed up in that city. I'm not voting. I, don't, I believe the candidates are all evil. They're of the devil. I'm voting for Jesus. I'm banking that this word that I speak to, you know what, the, you know what? God gave me a vision. This country is going to be split into two halves. The true, true Christians, people who truly have a heart for God and for Jesus and want to be saved, they're going to divide out. And the wicked, the, the worldly people, and even people in the church, they think that they're Christians, but what are they? They're hypocrites. What are they? They're money hungry. What are they? They're lukewarm. What did Jesus say about the lukewarm? He said, not they're not hot. Even an unbeliever knows this. Even an unbeliever knows this. Oh, you call me all the names you want. You're just blessing me more, okay? Jesus has compassion. You have no compassion. Oh, you lie. You lie. You're one of those religious hypocrites I was talking about. Jesus, Jesus said this in John chapter 7, verse 7. Jesus will take you to hell. Oh, no, all the wicked people who come up against the word of God, they'll end up in hell. The Bible, Jesus said this. Jesus said, the world cannot hate you, but it hates me, Jesus said, because I testify of it that its deeds are evil. That's the words of Jesus. And you're against me because I do what Jesus does. Now, who's the liar here? Who's the one telling the truth? And I've told you about God's grace. I've told you about compassion. I've told you about forgiveness, have I not? You don't understand because you want to sin. You want to continue in your wicked ways, your pornography. I go to church. Yeah, you go to church all in vain. It's in vain when you live in sin. You get married. You be faithful to a woman. And you don't love her just for her body. You love her because of her heart. You know, the Bible says this. The Bible says this in Proverbs 31. Women, listen to this proverb. It's for you. The Bible says, charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord, now she shall be praised. My wife is praised because she fears God. She, 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 is a, she is a godly woman. She's a faithful woman. She knows how to take care of the house, manage. She's not an unfaithful woman, you know, going out and spending her money on Gucci purses and expensive waste. I'm just saying, man, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of women that are wrapped up in materialism. Is it not true? It's a temptation for women. They want the big fat diamond rings. You wouldn't want some woman spending all your hard-earned money on Gucci. Gucci. Uh, let's talk about women. Let's not talk about women. Why not? Why not? Women are precious. They need they needed admonishment. I'm a strong woman. I'm not some precious little. Are you a Christian? I'm a Jew. Then you're nothing without Christ. I'll tell you what. Hold on, because Jesus said this. Jesus said this. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Jesus Christ is my authority. And Jesus said this. John 15, he said this. He who abides in me will bear much fruit, but without me you can do nothing. You are nothing without Jesus. I am nothing without Jesus. Every day I seek Jesus. You're rejecting the Son. You don't have the Son of God. You don't have the Father. That's what Jesus said. Don't call Jesus a liar. You're the liar. Well, according to what Jesus said, Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no one, no one comes to the Father but by me. What did John the Baptist say? What did he say? He said, don't say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father, for God is able to raise up children to Abraham from the stones. Don't say you're a Christian, I go to church. God can raise up true Christians in your place from the stones. You need to repent and strive to enter in. Your Messiah's come. You haven't believed the Messiah. And now when he comes back a second time, it's going to be to destroy the wicked. And it's not this, he's not coming back again. Am I the wicked? Well, without Jesus. So I'm, I'm the wicked. So if I don't, I'm if I'm wicked. not a part of any religion. You are the wicked. Are you a sinner? Are you, are you sacrificing bulls and goats for your, for your sins? No. Well, then you're not even a Jew anyways. Jews sacrifice bulls and goats for their sins. Read the Torah. Read the, the, Le the Leviticus. Read Deuteronomy. Read Numbers. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission for sins. You have no remission for your sins. You don't care. I'm actually a vegetarian. You don't care. You don't, I care because Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. He died. He shed his blood for you. Look, all flesh is grass. We're nothing. We are nothing.